This is the West African Gaboon Viper. And they're really an interesting snake because when you target up to their eye, their eye will do this little twitching motion. I think in the leaf litter um, in the wild, these guys get that little tiny movement to their eye and that attracts small mammals to get closer to investigate, see if it's something to eat, a little worm or what have you. And they get right up there and come bang. Fortunately, it usually takes quite a bit of antagonization to get a gaboon to defensively bite, but when they do, they mean business. People underestimate their speed and strength, and so this is oftentimes one of the snakes that you see as a beginning captive snake. They look like a big ball python, doesn't, and people just don't think they can do anything. But until you've seen a, a gaboon viper levitate, you've never seen a gaboon do what they can do. And by levitate, I mean you can have them facing one direction, and you know, before you have even noticed that they move, they're facing the other way. They just literally flip, and it's not a very good beginner specimen. Anytime I start a new staff member here, um, I always start with, with um, native to the United States species um, because we can treat those readily here. The best choice if you're living here in the United States, if you're going to start with a, a venomous snake, you start with something that anti-venom is very easy to come by. Uh, like, you know, the North American snakes, copperheads, water moccasins, uh, any of the rattlesnakes and such. Uh, that's perhaps the best place to start. What's a good starter than a snake? And, um, and we always go back to, well, if you're going to start with, with venomous snakes, start with the ones that are the least toxic. So if you do make a mistake, it won't be your last one. When somebody's starting out, we try to keep them in the hemotoxin family um, versus the neurotoxin, which are your cobras, your mamas, and some of the stuff that uh, can kill you very quickly or cause neurological damage. You certainly don't start with a mamba or a gaboon viper or a big rattlesnake or something like that. But you want to start with the snake that's probably going to be a little more forgiving should I say you know I get asked what's a good starter venomous snake you know and my answer is generally somebody else's the natural progression I think is to work around these snakes with a mentor with an advisor and then slowly acclimate yourself into some of the less lethal species your copperheads um, your mangrove snakes in Australia People's starter venomous snake is generally, you know, like a red-bellied black snake, a Sudeckis uh, uh, species, and, you know, we have copperheads here that we recommend. Copperheads are probably the snake that everybody goes, this is your first starter snake, but we shouldn't confuse that with it being a not a dangerous snake. Could a copperhead kill you? It has the potential to kill you. It probably won't, but there's nothing cool about being about missing a finger, about being disfigured, about being broke, um, uh, brain damage, any of these things that this snake is capable of. So you always have to remember that that hot is hot. I guess the better answer to that is it doesn't really matter, you know, to a great extent what you start with, but it's the mentor that really gels the, the danger involved as well as the skill set that you need. You really need to make sure that you get somebody that knows what they're doing to help you out and get you started. I started dry by myself, no help, no information, and I just about paid dearly for it. I came close to getting hurt pretty bad. How do I practice or how do I get ready for this without you know being in danger and I tell them well then you should get acquire aggressive snakes like black racers or, or, or black rat snakes or something that is an, an aggressive snake or a mean python and then handle them as if the if you got bit it would be a, a, you know it's a venomous snake. You want to get to the point where you get uh, skill sets and people, you know, watching what you're doing and telling you when you're about to screw up so you don't screw up. If you get used to handling black racers with a, a snake hook, you know, and, and gloves, you know, because you don't want to get bit, it's, it's very difficult. You know, I mean, they're, they're harder than, than mambas to handle with a hook. I can teach you the techniques in five minutes how to keep your fingers out of a snake's mouth. That's, that's a no-brainer. But applying those techniques, you have to do it. And the only way that you can learn with venomous snakes is through exposure. You have to learn from somebody that's been there, done that, learned the hard way. And you have to be choosy because there's, there's a lot of people that I wouldn't want to learn from. Working with someone who can show you these little traits that the different snakes have. Never grab this snake, do this. Don't come in from above on this snake. He doesn't like it. And that way, somebody can watch you work in these snakes and, oh, never move.
move your hook that way. You're going to drop the snake back on yourself. I start off with a prairie rattlesnake. They're, they're a medium-sized rattlesnake. They have a bad disposition for, for the most part. Relatively toxic venom for a rattlesnake and uh, lots of volume. And so they, they give a staff member a good exposure to rattlesnakes. You work with those you know, safely, consistently, and you learn the basic husbandry techniques that keep you safe. After that, you can move them into other types of snakes. You can go into small elapids, like the, the Cape Coral uh, Cobras. They're a perfect elapid. After people have the basic safety protocols in place, that's a great snake to work with if you want to work with elapids. Um, there is no antivenom for them, so that's a drawback. However, they're small. Their venom isn't um, tremendously toxic in relation to other elapids. It's small volume of venom and what have you. And so it's very low likelihood of death, but it will teach you the, the body mechanics that elapids work with and that you can then teach those techniques that relate to the elapid and move into some of the larger things. So you go with, uh, you know, really who your mentor is and, and what sort of species they have and you study, you, be, you have to become a student, you have to read about it, you have to dream about it, you have to breathe about it uh, and that really puts you in the place that you need to be to be a venomous handler. It's a gentle progression um, with enormous amounts of exposure. You know, when we get a new staff member here, I prefer they come with no hands-on experience. I don't want to hire another staff member that comes with what I perceive as bad habits. I know what is safe, and so I want them to learn my way, not someone else's way. I don't want to have to correct bad behavior.